So my name is Thomas Klepak. Um, you can call me Tom. You can call me Dr. Klepak, Professor Klepak. I'm fine with any of it. It doesn't matter. Uh, I have um, been teaching at Colby for five years. I'm married to Denise Bruzewitz, who's in the Environmental Sciences Department, uh, floor down. She's an aquatic ecologist, tenure track. I am not a tenure track, so I've taught all kinds of classes uh, in the chemistry and, and biology departments here. Um, whatever I can get my hands on, I'm happy to teach. Uh, I teach the human anatomy and physiology jam plan every year. Um, and I've also had biodiversity and what, whatever, a bunch of classes. Um, and this is the first year I'm teaching this class. Uh, my, my background is in carbohydrate uh, biophysics, theoretical carbohydrate biophysics. And we're not really going to get a chance to talk about too much actual theoretical carbohydrate biophysics, but we will talk about some carbohydrates. So I'm pretty excited about that. I I've, uh, haven't really been able to talk about carbohydrates too much since being at, at Colby. Uh, this class itself is um, it's a 100 level N class. Is it? So none of you, I'm going to take it that none of you are really science majors. Is that correct? No one here is a science major. Good. Uh, so don't, well you're sitting here, so that's already a leap of faith. Don't uh, be too intimidated by the word biochemistry. Um, for those of you who are looking for a more challenging class, um, I, I can uh, perhaps create avenues for you uh, for that. But in general, the class is um, for non-science majors. It's a 100 level class for non-science majors. So it shouldn't be, uh, the material shouldn't be too challenging. Um, this is, as I said, the first time I've, I've taught the class. The class has never been offered here before. I'm creating the class uh, new. So I'm going to ask your help in uh, making sure that I'm not getting too enthusiastic about uh, the material, keeping it at a, at a reasonable uh, but engaging level, still giving you some science. Um, I hope to have you have a basic understanding of what science is, what the biochemistry of food uh, means uh, by the time you leave here, and hopefully have fun. I want to try to make the class uh, fun and not as laborious as maybe um, some other science classes. So, um, can I can I get a sense? I don't I don't really have a good sense of who's in here. I haven't looked through the roster uh, very closely to see who's freshmen versus or sophomores versus upperclassmen. How many uh, underclassmen do we have? Freshmen or sophomores? So about half, and then or maybe two thirds, and then the rest of you maybe another third or upperclassmen. Are there any seniors in here? This is your last year. A couple. Okay, great. Good. Um, so. A nice mix. I like that. Um, what is this class uh, really going to help you uh, understand? Um, so, so here's a, a banana, right? And uh, I want you to have a basic understanding uh, of when I talk about a banana uh, and I break it down into its constituent parts. Uh, you have an understanding of what that means and what that's doing for your body, how your body is utilizing it. Uh, why does the food, uh, why does that particular food have that composition? Like why, do, why is a banana um, only 5% protein and 12% fiber? What is fiber? What does that even mean? Uh, and then fructose uh, and starch. Oh, no, no, it's not supposed to be fructose and starch. Bar fructose, I didn't know. But uh, what is fructose or fruit sugars versus, um, I should say, GL, glucose, that, or sucrose? What is sucrose? What are these different kinds of sugars? How is your body using them? Uh, what, do they, what do they do for you? Um, and then what is starch? Is it a fat? Is it some kind of uh, sugar? How is that different uh, from uh, some of the other sugars uh, in a food? Uh, what are the trace uh, bits in a food. How does your body utilize uh, them? What are some of the changes that go through uh, that food goes through? So a banana 
Uh, this looks like a pretty perfectly ripe banana. It's got a few black spots on it, so it's nice and sweet. Um, if it was a bit greener, maybe it wouldn't be as sweet. It would have a higher starch content, right? But with time, the starch breaks down and becomes uh, some of the smaller sugars, the fructose and the sucrose, and it becomes sweeter to our tongue. And with time, it becomes uh, brown and overripe. So we're going to learn um, the language of food around the biochemistry and nutritional content of food, right? So you can have a better uh, way of understanding uh, that information in general and also how it applies to your life. Um, I really uh, ideally would like to give you guys uh, some tools that um, are useful to you in your life. Uh, so you can make choices uh, for your own personal uh, nutritional health, uh, but also so that you can make good decisions as consumers and, uh, and constituents, voters. A lot of it has policy implications. Uh, for um, a whole host of things uh, that, that um, you may come across in your life. So I'm giving you the science background to uh, hopefully be able to make informed decisions uh, around food and, and the biochemistry of food. All right, um, so here is the syllabus for the first half of the semester. Has anybody looked at this yet? Anyone really poked around in the Moodle? No? Good. Uh, so, we're in here today. I don't want to be in here again. I don't know. I, I mean, we can vote. It's, we're, I, I'm a benevolent dictator. I'm happy to have like the, the, the charade of democracy. I'll certainly listen to you guys and take uh, your opinions to heart. So if, if you like this room, we can come back here, but I want to go and try out the Miller Experimental Classroom. If we do do that, we will have the distinction of being the first class on, on Colby's campus to actually teach a class in there. It gets used a lot to make podcasts or video uh, lectures or whatever, but no class is being consistently taught in there. So it could be us, and I, I'd, like it to, I'd like to try. Yeah, so has anyone been in that room before? You know where it is up there in Miller? Um, all right, so it's in, it's in 205, and uh, we will meet in there again on Monday. Um, so why do I say Monday and not Friday? Well, because on Friday, uh, we're going to be having a workshop in, uh, with this guy, Tim Stonecipher, in, in Lovejoy 404. Uh, and, and it will talk about how, um, I'll get into why we're having that in a bit, but it's essentially he's going to talk about how to use the Instructional Media Center, uh, which is what you're going to need to do to work on the project uh, for the semester. Okay, and I'll talk, I'll talk about that in a bit. So next Monday, instead of coming here for lecture, we're going to go to Miller 205, Miller 205. And the way to get there, you just go into Miller, uh, into the main floor of Miller. There's the big open study area. There's those stairs that go upstairs. You just go up the stairs and into the middle of the concourse on the second floor. It's, it's one of the classrooms right there. You just tuck right into it. And we'll, we'll try to use that. One of the reasons I want to move uh, the classroom there, besides the fact this room is not well set up for this, is uh, that I record my lectures. I like to record my lectures. Uh, so that I can post them. I, I post them to YouTube usually within a day or so um, after giving the lecture. And then uh, all those links will be embedded in the class Moodle. Um, and so if you uh, miss class, uh, you can go back and listen to the, watch the lecture and see uh, what we did in class. Um, you know, if you're sick or something like that, if you're sick, stay at home, stay in bed, rest yourself. If you're injured, you have an emergency, uh, it makes it not a problem. Also, it helps uh, some students study so they can go back and, um, and review what I said in class. Uh, although this class shouldn't be super, super intensive in terms of the, a huge amount of data that you're going to need to uh, review for the test. I'll be pretty explicit about uh, what you're going to need to know for that. Um, and that Miller 205 has got a really nice setup for a recording. So we'll do that. And there's a couple other features to it that are nice. 
So we'll see how that goes. Um, lab is on this floor, just across the hall down here in uh, 314. But we're also, um, as much as we can, going to use uh, the teaching kitchen in Page uh, behind the student mail room there. I haven't been in it yet. I'm going to do that as soon as I'm done with this lecture, see what it's like. Um, there's a, in the lab, there's going to be a lot of uh, things that are edible, uh, whatever, and there's going to be a little bit of cooking. Um, I'm still trying to settle in on exactly, uh, refine the lab as we, we go through it. Um, I have labs for every uh, week. Some of them seem kind of boring to me, so I, I may change them as the semester goes. Uh, I, I am starting the class. So. Um, for example, this coming week on Friday in lab, I wanted us, uh, you see here I have this uh, fermented foods lab part one, and that, and that was I was going to teach you guys how to make uh, sauerkraut and kombucha. You're going to make sauerkraut and kombucha, and it's going to be uh, an ongoing thing uh, throughout the semester. And depending on how well that goes, how popular it is, uh, we can continue to evolve that. We can go from sauerkraut into kimchi, which is a type of fermented cabbage from Korea. Or uh, we can move into kefir. I have the stuff to make uh, a water kefir, a juice-based kefir which is also a fermented uh, beverage. Has anyone had kombucha before? Probably many of you have. Well, you're, go you're all going to have it by the end. Um, unless uh, there's any, I, I need to know if there's any food allergies, if anybody has any food allergies. Huh? Peanuts and tree nuts. Oh, you have peanuts and tree nuts. Yeah, I have no plans to have anything like that. Yeah, okay, good. Well, um, anyways. Uh, and also, what was I going to say? Well, for example, here I have this calories dry lab, making sauerkraut and uh, kombucha. It doesn't actually take three hours. It's a pretty easy thing to do, to tell you the truth. Um, so I was going to have this uh, dry lab, like a computer-based lab that you could do. But I'm, I'm thinking, you guys know that tree over by Eustace over there that has all the plums hanging off of it, just all over the ground? I kind of want to make plum tarts on Friday in the, in the kitchen. So uh, that might be a fun way to end the first lab. So we'll see. I'm going to grab some today and make it at home and make sure I don't poison myself with the very sweet wine. Uh, we'll see how it, how it turns out. Uh, all right. So yeah, this is a rough outline of what I, I want to follow. A lot of these uh, lecture topics, um, I don't have these lectures made, I'm going to be like staying a day or hopefully a week ahead of you guys as I make the lectures. So some of this may uh, shift. Some of this may shift. I'll let you know uh, how it goes. Um, there is no textbook in this class. And uh, for a number of reasons, I don't really think you guys need to buy a big textbook that you're going to like resell or whatever. It, it seems kind of silly to spend all that money. Secondly, there's not a good textbook that covers this. Uh, the biochemistry of food textbooks that are out there are much more in-depth than uh, in like hardcore biochemistry uh, than I, I want to get with you guys. So there's no reason to buy that. Um, instead, what I'm doing um, for the out-of-class content of the class, it's going to be these podcasts. And I have a whole, I've selected a whole series for the whole semester already whole series of, pod, uh, series of podcasts that you'll find in the Moodle, and you will be expected to listen to them, and then every Friday uh, in lecture, we're going to spend, uh, we'll see how it goes, maybe 10 minutes at the end, maybe the whole class. I don't know how, uh, how engaging those podcasts are going to be, but we're going to talk about them. I'll have some questions and guided discussion uh, around these podcasts, and I'm, I'm trying to get them to like roughly line up with the material, the other material that I'm teaching, either in lecture or in lab. Sometimes it'll match lab better, sometimes it'll match uh, lecture better. But the pod podcasts um, should be interesting to you. Some of them are um, kind of dry on purpose to prove a point, but you'll understand when we get to them. Others of them are really fun to listen to. Um, so is there any people that listen to podcasts in here on a regular basis? Probably, I don't know, a whole lot, a couple of you guys. Well, you're going to be all listening to them 
this semester. Um, and there's a, there's a method to that madness. You're all going to be making podcasts this semester as well. Um, I'll get to that in a minute too. But, so um, a couple things I want to point out. The lab here, uh, not uh, in, in three weeks, the lab is, um, the Friday lab is going to be super tiny. You're going to come into the lab for like 10 minutes, take a pH measurement, and then get out. And you'll have that Friday off. All right? You're just going to get collect the data point off of your kombucha and sauerkraut and write it in your uh, lab notebook, and you'll bowl. Saturday, the next day, uh, I'm going to rent a couple SUVs, and I want to know, are there any student drivers in here? Is there anyone who, okay, great, great. Well, whoever wants, we can get a volunteer uh, amongst the student drivers to drive uh, one of the SUVs. But I'm going to rent a couple from uh, Enterprise, and we're all going to go to Common Grounds. I would imagine some of you have been there before. Who, who has been to Common Grounds? Yeah, a few of you. Well, the rest of you, uh, we're all going to go to Common Grounds, uh, which is a big kind of like farmer's fair that happens in the area. It's a, it's a very cool thing uh, that Maine has. It's put on by the Maine Organic Growers and Farmers. No, Organic Farmers and Growers. Gardeners? I don't know. Uh, earthy people um, put it on here in the state of Maine. It's out in unity on the, on the Common Grounds Fairgrounds. Um, all right. Uh, so you can look forward to that. That's going to be a field trip for the kids, which is very cool. Um, and then is there anything else I need to point out on that? No, I don't think so. On this second semester, uh, much the same. So um, here is how I'm going to be grading the class. Uh, there will I do have to give a couple tests. I'll give um, a midterm. Uh, exam, which is just going to be uh, pretty much just like essay questions talking about covering concepts that we've covered in, in class. I'm not going to ask you to barf up a whole bunch of detailed um, data or information, but um, there will be, um, there will be, I I'm looking to see how much of it's sinking in and whether you guys are able to think critically uh, about what we've been discussing in class. Okay. So actually, uh, I'm going to go on another tangent just for a second because I use the term critical thinking. Um, I taught a first class last week for a bunch of freshmen, and um, I, I'll say this also. I, I also teach, in addition to this, um, I've said I'm a jack of all teaching trades. I also teach at uh, a performing arts-based charter high school in the area teach all their upper level math and science at, at this school. And I was in the anatomy class that I teach over there, and I was talking about critical thinking, and also the same day in the first class, talking to the freshmen about what uh, they think uh, liberal arts education was, and they talked about critical thinking. One of the things that came out that was interesting to me is that um, they didn't really know what critical meant in critical thinking. Um, so, you know, like, for example, the high schoolers gave me the definitions of critical as being urgent, like critical care. Uh, it's critical to think. It's important to think. Um, that is what the word critical means in that context, but not what critical thinking is referring to. It's a different meaning. Or they thought of critical as being a negative thing, like being uh, harshly criticizing someone, sort of a mean-spirited uh, section of what they're doing. Um, and, and neither of those are, are what... Uh, critical thinking means. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm uh, I don't take it the wrong way that I'm, I, I'm defining critical thinking for you so that you understand uh, what it is. But I, I find it to be um, the underpinning of all academia, of all learning, the, the notion of constructive, po positive, positive critical thinking, positive criticism. Uh, learn to accept. Uh, criticism from others, a constructive, positive criticism, that is like a supportive discussion of what certain weaknesses and strengths are in whatever you're doing, or having a skeptical view towards information that you're given uh, so that you can discern what may be the truth, right? I mean, it's important to have uh, the, the critical in critical thinking underlies all 
of, of academia, and it's probably the best thing that academia can give you when you go out into the real world, right? You, you may wonder, with all these classes, or, am I ever going to use any of this stuff? Well, the classes are a vehicle to get you to think critically, um, right? Uh, so it is critical to have critical thinking. You guys, am I conveying what I what I mean by that? Okay. So uh, there's going to be a midterm and a final of, of equal weights, um, and then there's going to be this podcast blog project. Uh, this project is going to involve uh, you finding a partner and uh, creating a series of two podcasts uh, in your group. Okay. So uh, by the end of the class we will have a podcast uh, from every person. And this is in lieu of a lot of intense homework that you would probably get in, in a typical science class, uh, right? You don't have to do a lot of like hardcore number crunching or anything like that. Uh, but I am trying to get you to understand uh, some science across some topics, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, and you do have to work, and, and it's going to be to make these podcasts. It should be fun. Has anybody here done a podcast before? Probably not. You have. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, some, some teachers, a few, like Tim uh, Hubbard over in Econ does it with a class of his. But uh, we're going to do it here, and it should be fun. Um, talk about that more in a bit. Uh, so that's uh, an, another equal portion uh, in the class. Then there may be some quizzes. Uh, and that's just to make sure that you are keeping up with the uh, podcasts and the concepts that I'm, uh, I'm talking about in class, right? I, I don't have any of them written. I'm not even sure what they'll be yet, uh, but I'm putting that in there to give myself the leeway to be able to give them if, if they're necessary. I don't want to do a whole lot of that, but if, if it seems like it's a good idea, I, I, I will have some of that, okay? And I'll, I'll give you a warning of that. And then finally, uh, there's the GMO debate. And right at the end of the semester, we're going to have uh, the class is going to mount a debate. Uh, we're going to divide the class down the middle, and we are going to debate the pros and cons of genetically modified foods. Um, and I don't know if any of you have strong opinions on that uh, now or not, but uh, we will uh, try to support different positions with uh, strong uh, research and argument, all right? So and the debate will happen in the class. It may be open to the public. I don't know if we ever get anyone to come to it. But um, that that's going to happen. And leading up to that, uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, podcasts that are both pro and con, and et cetera. So, uh, but you'll also be on your own to, to research that. Um, and then finally is this personal log. I'll talk about that in a bit, a little portion. Um, so the next lecture, that's 70% of your grade, and then lab, these lab write-ups are going to be about 30% of your grade. Uh, the lab write-ups are going to be significantly uh, more modest than you would find in a typical science class, um, but they'll basically just be you writing up your results um, and, and your data and your results of, of the experiments that we're going to be doing in the lab. Um, yeah, there should be some really fun labs. I've tried to come up with uh, some good stuff. We're going to do a lot with chocolate. Uh, we're going to hopefully be able to analyze the uh, antioxidant content of chocolates to see uh, what different brands of chocolates, how good are you, can we compare these different brands and say which one is actually giving us genuine benefit. Uh, or there's a maple syrup analysis, so you know Travis. Does anybody else know Travis Reynolds? in uh, the environmental studies policy side. He, uh, he's a, a very colorful faculty member that you would do well to meet, it's interesting, but um, he owns a maple syrup farm in Standard, Vermont um, that his family's had for I don't know how long, uh, for a long time. But I have 40 samples of maple syrup from him and we're gonna um, uh, use a, like a $2 million DART mass spectrometer, this really nice piece of equipment in the chemistry department, it's super easy. You dip a stick in it, you stick it in the machine, and it spits out the analysis for you. We'll talk about how it works more as we get closer. But you're going to compare the chemical analysis of the maple syrup 
to these tasting notes. Uh, there's like extensive tasting notes uh, that on, on what the maple syrup tastes like. And we're going to try to qualitatively compare the chemical analysis to what maple syrup tastes like. And we're going to look for patterns. I don't know if there are any, because we've never done it before. So we're going to be exploring that. If, it, if we find something interesting, uh, there's a, a large uh, Vermont maple syrup aggregator that has thousands of samples with tasting notes that we could use in the future, and maybe the class can publish a paper uh, down the line. But you guys are going to be the first foraging ahead to see uh, what's there. And I'll, I'll hold your hand for this. Uh, my yard reaction uh, sounds scary, but that's just like baking things. Uh, we'll do flour mixes, sugar cookies at the end. So th there should be some, some fun in there for you, hopefully. Uh, I use, I put a lot of effort into my Moodle. Um, I don't know, the freshmen may not have a lot of experience with Moodle yet, uh, but there's uh, your Moodle page. Everything runs through there. These are the different sections in the Moodle. Uh, the PDF of lecture PowerPoints. So this whole PowerPoint you can find as a PDF um, in the Moodle. Uh, and as I make them, maybe sometimes it'll be the night before, or probably many times the night before, I'll get the PDFs up there. Um, I'll, I'll try to stay as far ahead as possible, but um, I'll say this. Uh, I set an uh, expectation of myself that um, I want to live a, a, a livable, sustainable lifestyle. That's what I want for myself. I try to keep my stress down. Um, I try to get some physical activity. I try to interact with my beautiful children and wife. Um, and so uh, I, I try to not let my work bleed too far out into time that uh, where it doesn't belong. And I, I hope that to model that for you so you guys can learn how to do that too. Um, Colby has some of the most talented uh, young people that you can find in the country, in the world, people come from all over here, very talented people. Um, I want to see uh, part of that talent being able to uh, choose a healthy, sustainable, supportive, enjoyable uh, lifestyle for yourself. Uh, learn how to develop uh, techniques of time management and stress management. Um, certainly nutrition is part of that. So um, there may be lectures where my lecture PowerPoints Year one, it's like the, the version one of the PowerPoint. So I, I may not be as, as slick as I would have been, but I, I beg your patience for that. Whatever I have, it'll go up there. Uh, lecture assignments, there's actually nothing in that tab yet, but uh, stuff will come there uh, as, it, as it progresses. Lab assignments, um, so the lab uh, instructions for the week will appear there, and uh, any data sheets that you need to fill out. And then uh, an assignment portal for submitting uh, that stuff. It's going to show up in there. Uh, the weekly lecture podcasts. So though that's totally full, uh, every, broken down uh, by week. So you can um, you can begin doing that now. There's two for this week in there that um, I would ask you to listen to. Uh, as I said, I'm going to record all my lectures, and they'll be under the lecture recording tab uh, as, as videos. Uh, other resources, this tab is going to have your, uh, it's way at the bottom below all the uh, podcasts. Uh, the other resources uh, tab is going to have things like the sign up for the, um, the uh, instructional media center and information about how to do the podcast. It's also going to be the class blog site. There's a class WordPress site. Um, so when you make your podcasts, those podcasts are going to eventually get embedded on the page uh, in the blog for this year, right? Every person's going to have their own page where their um, podcast is, and there's going to be a short blog introducing uh, that podcast, right? So ideally, the way I want it to go is that like each year that this class is taught is a season of podcasts, all right? And uh, there will be a 2017 thing. You, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and then we, we are going to have a guest lecture uh, this year uh, from the guy named uh, Josh Wolfowitz from uh, Heiwa Tofu. Uh, there's a tofu um, production company here in Maine locally. 
Uh, he's a really interesting guy. He's going to come out and talk to you guys for a day. So I'll, I'll record those, and you can, uh, in the future, people will be able to go back and look at those recordings if you want. So we enter that tab. So here's the website. Uh, the link is in the Moodle, but that's it right there. It's just the standard Colby uh, Moodle sites and then BI-197. It is non-indexed. It's not an indexed website, so you can't Google it. Uh, but anybody who has the link can go to it. It's not portal uh, controlled. Um, and I do that because some people don't really want themselves on the web at all. Uh, but, um, but if you say you want to show your grandma what, what you did, you know, the podcast or whatever, uh, it's, it's, it can be found right there. So uh, I'm going to put my lectures up here as well when I get good ones. There'll be some resources. And your student podcasts will be under uh, that tab. So this is kind of like the Moodle is the inward-facing uh, resource, and this is our outward-facing resource. Um, yeah, anybody who wants to like work on that website, please, I would I would appreciate uh, so above and beyond. Like I, that's just a stock photo back there. I, I would love to like shine the site up a bit. Um, okay, so then this personal log. Um, I do this, I started doing, I started it in my human anatomy jam plan, uh, and I just had them do it for the month. And then last year I had my uh, human physiology class I taught in spring do it, and I, I, it's just, it's, it's kind of a successful thing. And so I'm going to have you guys do it too. And I've uh, changed it just a little bit, uh, but um, it's, it's a tool that um, I hope is useful help you be more mindful of your um, patterns, the, the, your lifestyle patterns. So I'm going to, um, this chart is on the Moodle um, under lecture resources. You'll find it on there. Uh, and it's either as a PDF or, or a Word document. You can print the PDF out and keep it by your, your bed and just fill it out uh, before you go to bed at night. Or you can take the Word document and just type into the document either way it's, it's okay but what I want you to do is keep track of what you do all right so uh, here I just made made up uh, this thing you get how many hours of sleep do you get in a night are you sleeping enough uh, so seven and a half hours okay that's good uh, did you get any exercise today I, we went jogging for 25 minutes write that down Walked in the yard for an hour. That's great. I went to a meditation workshop and sat around and looked at nothing at, at the cosmos for an hour. Um, wh whatever it happens to be, right? Uh, and then just write what you had for breakfast and lunch and dinner. And if you have any snacks, you know, write the kind of snacks that you might have had. That. And then importantly, I want you to rate your stress for the day. I want you to rate your stress. And here's the scale. One is very low, two is partial, three is moderate, four is high stress, and uh, five is very high stress, very high stress, right? And you can circle the number if you're right on it, or if you're somewhere in between, you can put a slash in between the numbers, okay? So I want you to keep track of that. It's not gonna be graded uh, if you are like, super high stress and eating cookies the whole semester, you will get the same amount of credit as people eating salads and tofu and meditating all day. Like, it's, I'm not judging you at all, at all, whatsoever. It's all about um, just getting you to think about your level of stress and the amount of sleep that you're getting and, and try to come up with ways uh, to make healthy choices, right? That's all that it's about. That's all that it's about. It's about healthiness, well-being, balance. That's what I'm trying to, to get at. Um, all right. Oh, I'll say this. Put yoga in there, 50 minutes. I do teach a yoga class. Um, it's in the Dunn Dance Studio across from Foss at 5.30 on Wednesdays in the, in the evening. 5.30 in the evening on Wednesdays. So you can come and do yoga with me. I do Ashtanga yoga and then zip over to Foss and get a big salad, whatever you want. So there's that. All right. So within the podcast, I would like there to be a unifying theme across the class uh, for the semester. 
and I'm going to let you guys choose, as a group, choose what that theme is. I'm going to give you uh, a, uh, yeah, the weekend to figure out uh, what theme you want as a group and to find a partner that you're going to be able to work with uh, because I, I want that dialed in pretty quickly. Uh, we have Common Grounds coming up in, in two and a half weeks, and uh, that could be a really great place to get first-hand uh, audio footage, um, uh, depending on what, what you pick. Um, the theme, uh, I, I came up with seven possible themes here that you can choose from. If there's another theme that you really want um, outside of those, then I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Um, but I want, my, my goal here is uh, in the future, I would like to take the best of the podcasts from previous years and use that as content in subsequent years. All right. So I don't want it too far afield. Um, I, ha I picked things that I, I thought uh, are germane to the discussions that we're having in class. Um, and and what, what are they? So I gave you, the, the themes are here, you know, in, in, the, in the bold, and I gave some examples of what topics of uh, podcast topics could be within that theme. They're not written in stone, right? You can, you can whatever topic within that, as long as I approve it, uh, is fine, right? But I just gave you some examples to get the brain going. So Pros and cons of various diets and nutritional regimens. There are so many different diets out there, right? So many different types of nutritional regimens that people have. There's like bodybuilding regimens that like bodybuilders. There's like elite athlete uh, nutritional programs. There's bulletproof diet, if anyone knows what that is, or South Beach, or paleo diet, or veganism, or like Atkins program, or Weight Watchers, and the list is endless. And uh, what are they? Are they effective? What do they do to your physiology? Uh, what's the history of them? Are there strange stories about them? What are local people or regional people? Uh, what's their experience of them? Um, just stories about each of those different kinds of uh, nutritional programs. I thought it was interesting. Uh, food is medicine. So that's a, that's a good theme, right? A lot of people think of food as medicine. Uh, ethnobotany and traditional medicine, or like what does tart cherry juice do? What is medicinal marijuana? Uh, what's the story behind that? Natural sleep aids, uh, Gerson therapy. These are all uh, food as medicine. Superfoods. There's like so many different foods are called superfoods, right? Uh, what is a superfood, and what's the story behind a particular superfood? Like goji berries. What is a goji berry? Where does it come from? Uh, who eats them? What do they do for you? Is it real? What are the pros and cons? Um, you know, stories about them, that kind of thing. Uh, foods that are supposed to be good for you, but maybe aren't. Um, so there, are a lot of people. There's a lot of foods that uh, you know people think, oh, I'm going to cut down the calories, eat NutraSweet, um, but you know that has uh, downsides to it. Uh, soy and eating too much soy and the estrogenic compounds that are in that. Uh, yerba mate. I've been drinking yerba mate for 25 years, truly, in the morning. I owned a coffee shop and it, it failed, failed business, and I started drinking uh, yerba mate. And it turns out yerba mate can cause pharyngeal cancer, they say, maybe. Is, what's the data about that? Uh, cyanobacteria, they talk about that as being nutritional something, etc. Foods that flip flop, the scientific ups and downs of different foods. Maybe. These two are, are no. Well, the, the point here is that uh, foods that were once good then became bad, and then go back and, and forth. Um, so, for example, some people now think you know saturated fats have been bad for a long time, but now saturated fats are getting a second look. Maybe uh, they uh, need to be revisited, or bad egg, good egg, avocados. I don't know. Uh, lunch logistics, the biochemical history of food storage and transport. Um, there's a lot that goes into the biochemistry of getting food into you, getting the food to your plate. Uh, like how do we keep bananas from ripening too fast? Or uh, storing apples in nitrogen, why do they do that? Uh, 
and there's a local there's a, a local tie in there. There's an apple farm. A lot of the apple farms around here have uh, nitrogen storage, apple produce nitrogen gas naturally. Uh, all short pasteurization. What's the history of that? What farms around the area do that? Because you interview somebody about about uh, all short pasteurization, uh, dry ice, UV, etc. And then Maine made. Uh, and I put this one in there because this is um, the easiest, probably, of all of them to go out and find people uh, locally or regionally that you could talk to and get interesting interviews and source material uh, to, to make it a good, um, a good story to listen to. So there's a lot of, you know, the foodie movement is deeply tied to the back of the land movement here in Maine. There's a lot of people, fronts of people out there doing stuff. There's a, a huge lacto-fermentation uh, community in Maine. Uh, a lot of cheese culturing, kind of a tree tree right over on Snow Pond. Uh, liquor and wine, tree spirits is is um, right there on uh, on Oakland Road off of Rice Rips. Uh, but there's a, a lot of you know, cool fermentation beer uh, and sour beers that are made in the state of Maine. Uncured bacon, how does that work? Is it safe? There's a lot of people that make uncured bacon in the state of Maine. So there's that. Uh, aquaculture, there's a there's a some that means like growing fish in big tanks, right? Um, and there's a lot that's being done with that on the coast. The guy from Hewa Tofu. So those are some examples, right? Um, and uh, those are potential themes. I want you guys to figure out, uh, find a partner in the next couple days, and then we will have uh, maybe maybe we'll do it on Friday. Maybe we'll have, we'll revisit this uh, discussion when we're in the um, the workshop with Kim Stonecipher in Lovejoy 404 during lecture. Right, that's our next lecture. Uh, maybe at the end of that, we'll, have, we'll revisit this and pick a theme as a class. Okay, so think about it. Find a partner. See what the partner thinks, um, and we'll we'll come to some kind of consensus. All right, and I'm open to other ideas too. If you got good ideas, we can we can talk about those as a group. So bring those if you got other ideas. Um, all right. So um, I, if you have a piece of paper. I'd like a piece of paper to come out, and um, I don't want your name on it. Uh, I don't want your name on it. This is all going to be anonymous. I'm just trying to gather information. Um, and if you don't have a piece of paper, just share one with your partner. Um, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions here, and you're going you're to answer them so I can read them and get a sense uh, of where the class is at. All right? Uh, the questions are totally anonymous. Um, unless you want to put your name on it, if you want me to know that it's you that's telling me this stuff, that's fine too. Um, I don't, I don't care uh, about that. But I do not feel like you have to put your name on it. Um, so as I said, yeah, we're, we're going to be exploring various aspects of the biochemistry of food. As part of that, I hope you can think deeply about your own connection to the topics we discuss. The following questions are both an attempt to get you started on this process of self-reflection and for me to get a general sense of what your understanding and attitudes are in this regard. There's no right or wrong answers. I'll collect the sheets, but they're anonymous and not great. Number one, just describe the food that you eat in a day. Describe the food you eat in a day. Typical day.
and get some more light. Does that help? Thank you. Next question is, uh, if you're still working on the first one, keep writing, but some people seem like they're done. Subjectively speaking, how healthy would you say your dietary intake is? Do you think you eat fairly healthy, very healthily, uh, not so healthily, it's sporadic, it's up and down, it's widely varied depending on your mood? Um, again, don't feel rushed, but how much food do you estimate that you eat in an average day? Everybody's going to have different caloric needs. Uh, a football player is going to have a different need than uh, a person whose main hobby is video games. So um, if you were to break the food you eat down into categories, carbohydrate, protein, and fat, what are the relative percentages of each that you think make up your daily dietary intake? Do you eat 30, 30, 40? Do you, you know, what is it? How would you, uh, how would you rate the relative proportions of those three uh, food nutrient categories, carbohydrates, proteins, So if you were to break the food you eat down into carbs, protein, and fat, what are the relative proportions of them? Yeah, so is your diet like 40% carbs, 40% protein, 20% fat, or what, what would you, if you had to guess, I'm not, you know, like, don't feel like you need to get the right answer. I just want to see what your, what you think your diet is, right? So, and when I say carbs, that means Sweet sugars like an ice cream cone, but it also means fiber and starches, all the different ways that uh, you consume carbohydrates. All right, there's some people that are already done, so I'm going to go to the last question. Uh, finally, so this one is, uh, there is a right answer to this one. Uh, but it's, don't feel pressured because I'm not trying to get a right answer. I just want to see how close you can come to a correct answer. I just want to see where your heads are all at. So what would you estimate are the relative energy densities of carbohydrate, proteins, and fats? So, um, for example, you can do it in a number of different ways. You can say 1 to 1 to 3 or three to one to two, or something like that, ratios. Or uh, the more um, uh, quantitative, that's a qualitative way, a quantitative way would be to say calories per gram. How many calories is in a gram of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats? And a gram is about the weight of a paper clip. I know, it's a little bit of math. I'm making your heads hurt here, first day. But uh, do your best. I just want to see where you, where you can get. Like how many calories is in a gram of carbohydrates? How many calories is in a gram of proteins? And how many calories in a gram of fats? And a gram is, is the weight, uh, approximately, of a small paper clip.
think about it. If you have no earthly idea at all, that's okay. You can guess. Just guess. It doesn't matter. Your name's not on it. It doesn't have to be. It can be. But it, it doesn't matter at all. I just want to see. All right? Any more time? Everybody done? And, and, and lastly, I'll say, if there's anything else that you want me to know, uh, you can put it on there. If you want me to know it anonymously, you can put it on there now. If you want me to know it, uh, like, personally, you can write it with your name or you can come up to me. I just, if there's anything else you want me to know uh, around this sort of battery of questions. And then I'm going to let you out of here. Was this, was this okay? A, a, a fine hello? So let me tell you, remind you, for next time on Friday, I want you to listen to the podcasts that I assign. They're in the Moodle. And I want you to read the lab for the Kombucha lab. It's actually kind of long. Just read it. It should be interesting. It's not hard. It's a lot of background. Just read the lab, listen to the podcast. See you at 404 Lovejoy on Friday at 9. All right? Go team. You all good? Yeah. It's going to be a fun semester, I hope. If it's not, tell me. <laughs>